שפע יצא את הגבוה אל הר הזה. שבת שלום. שבת שלום. This week's portion normally is a double portion. Tazriyim et Sora is normally together. But because we had a long year last year, uh, 13 months, okay, uh, it's been split up into um, two separate weeks. This week is Tazria. It comes out of, uh, if you got a copy of the notes, it comes out of Leviticus, Baikra 12.1 to 13.59. Okay. And the Haftar portion for this week is 2 Kings 4.42 to 5. Okay. Yehovah spoke to Moshe saying, speak to the children of Israel, saying, a woman, when she conceives and she gives birth to a male, shall be contaminated for a seven-day period as during the days of her separation. Infirmary, infirmity shall she be contaminated, and on the eighth day shall the circumcision of the flesh of his foreskin, shall be the circumcision of, of the flesh of his foreskin. For 30 days and 3 days, which is 33 days, shall, she shall remain in the blood of purity, anything sacred she may not touch, and into the sanctuary she may not go, until the completion of the days of her purity. So the whole impurity part of this is 33 days plus the 7, the 8th is included, so it's 40 days. Okay, so 33 days, she's impure for, if she has a male. Now this is what it says. And if for a female she gives birth, she shall be contaminated for two weeks as during her separation for 60 days. And six days shall she be contaminated in the blood of purity. Upon the completion of the days for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a sheep within his first year for a burnt offering and a young dove or turtle dove for a sin offering. To the entrance of the tabernacle or the tent of meeting to the Kohen. Okay, so she's contaminated for two weeks plus 66 days. How much does that bring it to? 80 days. What happens at the point of uh, the eighth day for a male? He gets circumcised. Okay, and and then there's a 33 day period which brings it to 40 days, okay? This is really important. All this has to do really with the circumcision of the heart, okay? The completion of purification, the woman being made pure, the male, the, you know, in this case it's the woman. And this is like a bride, okay? Um, the word where we get the Torah portion out of, it's sarah, it means seed. Is that the word you want to cover, Josh? <coughs> it's the whole, the whole name. Okay. Uh, it says this, the word for separation is nida. It's the filthiness, menstruation, uh, uh, impurity. The word infirmity is to be ill. And contaminated is the word tame. Tame. It means to be unclean. And the completion of the days of purity, the pure the word for purity is still hard, which is purif purification, cleanness, or clearness, I'm sorry, clearness. It also has been used for glory on occasion. <laughs> okay. Now, so we have a portion of both the Mishnah, which is the Mishnah is a, a set of books on the oral Torah on how things were done in ancient times. And there's a section in there called Nida. And in the Talmud, there's a commentary on that section called Nida. And this is, you know, Nida is, comes from separation. The completion of a time of purity represents the time when our relationship to God will be perfect, pure, and glorious. Okay? So, what is the time for a male? 40 days, right? How many times do we see in the Bible where people were tested for 40 days? And then there's peace, right? How many, remember Israel in the wilderness for 40 years? 
Remember the life of Moses? He was in Egypt for 40 years. He completed that task. Then he went to be a shepherd for 40 years, and then he led Israel for 40 years. <coughs> okay? 40 is a time of testing, yes, but at the completion, there's peace. There's perfection. There's purity. We've been talking even this morning today about, about the perfecting process that God is putting us through right now. The season of Ben HaChemes that we're in, God's getting us clean. Uh, and perfect, pure, and glorious. It's been, for, for a child, if the child's a girl, it's 80 days. 80 is symbolic of the New Jerusalem, when everything will be perfect. So eight also isn't, if she has a male, he's circumcised on the eighth day, which is symbolic of completion or perfection and something new that's coming. Okay? And in, by the way, in the blood that's of the circumcision is the blood of Yeshua. Okay? Because he is the only one that makes a way for us to be in the New Jerusalem in the first place. Okay, so there the eighth, the forty, the the eighty, okay, all is significant. Um, and I have it broken down for you. Uh, and Josh, I think, wants to share a little bit on this, so in a moment I'll let him share on it. Uh, okay. So for a male, the time of the seven days, one week, eight days, circumcision, separated additional 33 uh, days from the completion of the work for a total of 40 days. The Hebrew word for male here is zahar. And literally, its root word, zahar, means to remember. See, this is the problem with men, we forget. Males forget. We have a problem with forgetting. So God made the name of a male here to remember. <laughs> Why do you think he told the Jews to wear a seat seat on the corner of their garments? It says to remember the commandments. <laughs> That's why. And that's in Numbers 15. Because we forget. How many times did God tell Israel Remember that I brought you through when you live in your houses and you didn't build and your and your trees and you didn't plant. Okay? Remember I brought you there. It wasn't through your own strength. Because we forget. Okay, and then the word for female is makal, which means to pierce. Okay. And if you put the two together, which Josh is gonna Right, is this what you wanted to cover, Josh? That's a part of it. Okay. You put two, two together, the word for male and female, it means remember the piercings. Messiah, Messiah, Messiah. Messiah was pierced through for us. Remember the piercings. So even in the story of the male and the female and the, and the impurities of being made perfect and the blood of the circumcision and and the blood of impurities, okay? In here is a revelation of remember the piercings of Messiah, okay? You gotta always remember what Messiah did for us, okay? Amen. And in both the male and the female, we remember. Remember the piercings. Now, just to add a little to this, if you add up the days for the impurity for of a woman for a male and for a female, you know what it comes out to? 120. 120 times 50. Do you remember every 50 years is a jubilee? Okay. If you multiply 50 times 120 jubilees, you come out to 6,000 years. God has allowed the impurity of the earth by man running it. For 6,000 years. And then comes his kingdom. For the 6,001 to 7,000. The day of the Lord. Okay. Do you understand that? So even in, in the combination of both. He's filled the earth. With male and female. When they follow. Uh, the time of impurity. Comes out to 120. So that we're dealing with. 120 jubilees or 6,000 years of impurity and then God's going to make the earth pure. Okay. Think about Moses. He was 120 years old when he died. And Joshua took over 
Joshua, Yeshua, Yehoshua, Jesus takes over and leads them into the promised land. Amen. So, hey, it's the same story. God's speaking to us. It's time in this impurity, it's time to get rid of the impurities. Amen. Get rid of the impurities and get ready for the kingdom because the kingdom is within you. He has already placed the kingdom in us. Amen. We can already live in the future. Praise the Lord. That kingdom in us. But he's still getting rid of the impurities out of us. And because we still live in flesh. Okay, also, uh, we are being prepared to be a bride. So for a male, the child's 40 days, right? Impurity, right? Well, do you know in the Hebrew, and probably I might be stepping into years, I'm not sure. But the, the letter men comes out to um, 40. Uh, this is uh, the, the small men, right? Small men comes out to 40. Okay. This is really important because the men here, it, it, in its final form, is a square. Okay. The, the square that was in, in the, both the tabernacle and the temple is that room where the Holy of Holies was, the throne of God. The Holy of Holies was symbolic of the throne of God. Okay, so there's the 40, okay? But also, a square, which is where we get the word 40, by the way, that's the meaning of what 40 is, square, okay? I just think about that. It's good to be square. I don't care what everybody says. <laughs> it's, it's hip to be square. Okay, it's hip to be square. Someone wrote a good song about that in the 80s, okay? But I think it was Huey Lewis, right? Probably. <laughs> hip to be square, okay? Now, I'm telling you, Square is 40. It's completion. It's purity. Okay? Even in the letter men, it's waters. The waters of purity. Okay? But more than that, okay, I just have to think about this. That we're talking about the holiest place. The new Jerusalem. Okay, now we talked about 40. What about the rest of it? What about the time period for uh, a woman? It's 80 days. Well, what are we waiting for? A new Jerusalem. And what is that Jerusalem? It's a square. It's it's basically every tabernacle and temple that was built, or tabernacle and the temples that were built, that room of the Holy of Holies is symbolic of the new Jerusalem. Okay, and he's going to have this big square. It's going to be 1,500 miles on a new earth and a new heavens. Okay. So there's the square again. So it's all also, as we talk about impurity, but it's the impurity of a woman, right? And then she's made pure by the 40th day for a male, the, the, the uh, 80th, day, 80th day for a female. And guess what that means? That means it's more significant, correct, for, for a woman, to, for the New Jerusalem to be called feminine or, or a woman, because she's a bride prepared. She comes out in the book of Revelation. She comes down as a bride. We are being prepared as a bride through the purification process. Both the male and the female. We are being and together as a bride for 120 jubilees or 6,000 years to be with Messiah. Because she's going to come for us at Amen. the beginning. Yes. Amen. Okay. Just a crazy thought. Okay. okay. You, we will be purified. We will be in the bride, you know, because we're coming. Is he going to purify this earth? In the process, yes. Because a lot of evil has gone He's on. going to totally purify. You remember the flood that purified the earth the first time, right? With water? Yeah, but I'm talking about a lot of. I'm, I'm dead in your No, no. Know. He's going to purify the world with fire. Amen. <laughs> Think about it. The first time, all the waters. Do you know that the waters, when they came down, they didn't just they didn't just come down from rain. They came up from every mountain. All the waters were hot waters that came out of the mountains. Okay, and and the flood came from the earth too. Well, guess what? When the fire comes, it's going to come not just from God judging from above. It's going to come up from beneath. It says every mountain will not be able to be found. 
Every mountain's going to go off. I don't care if they're dormant or what. There's nowhere you're going to escape. As I told you last week, I think, I don't know if it was recorded or not, but someone that I knew saw the entire west side under, 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 um, under lava. Okay, because Mount Cristo Ray blew up. That was a prophetic word for the day of the Lord, for the wrath of God. It, is he going to send us on vacation while he does this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think we're going to be here for the wrath of God, because when God pours out his wrath, there's not going to be, no flesh would survive. And the only reason flesh is going to survive is because of us. He's going to take us to be with him. Amen. Okay, so that's the only way. And, and there's going to be some that will survive, because there will be certain places that God's going to protect when he pours out his wrath. Because we have places that says that he sends the survivors of the nations to gather his people that are in various places that have not heard of God. So God's going to be protecting certain places in the earth where his people will be protected. Israel and the Jews and stuff will be protected. And even maybe some believers will, which will be sent to minister to those Jews in those places. Okay, but what I'm saying is that this wrath of God is like, it's going to kill us so much that it wouldn't suffer. It says men will be scarcer than gold when it's all finished. And it says that in the prophecies about the coming of the wrath of God, coming on the day of the Lord. Men will be scarcer than gold. Now, how scarce is gold? How many are there? there was it 8 billion people on the earth right now? Something like that? Maybe 9? I don't know. But maybe by this whole time, the whole time the whole thing's finished, there may only be a few million left. Maybe millions. Okay. May not be. There won't, there won't be billions left. It's going to make like that movie in uh, 2012 that came out look like child's play. It's going to be bad. Okay. All, all the, the mounts are going to go off. There's not going to be, they're not going to be able to find the mounts because they're all going off. They're all kind of blown apart. Okay, it's not going to be pleasant. We won't want to wish anybody to go through that. It's going to be hell on earth. Okay, and then, but he's going to protect his people. I know it. It's not everywhere he's going to, going to get wiped out, destroyed like that. Some places are going to get totally destroyed, and other places will be spared. In fact, it says, when I pour out my wrath, it says, when he's dealing with Edom, because he's, I will make a complete end to all nations. It literally says this in the prophets. I will make a complete end to all the nations, but Israel, I will not make a complete end to you. But you will be corrected. So it's not going to be easy for Israel. I will correct you for what you've done, but you will not be wiped out like all the nations will be. That's when his wrath comes, but that's later. That's after the time of the glory, the season of the glory that's coming, in which we'll see millions saved, maybe billions so they won't have to go through that horrible, the horrible uh, time of, of God's wrath. Okay. All right. Now, going on. Oh, Josh, did you want to share something? Did I share it? Um, I'll, I'll go when you're when you're done a little bit. Okay. All right. Um, it talks about the offerings. Now, Miriam and Joseph, the mother and father of Yeshua. Okay. They can only offer up a young dove. Okay. Uh, when it came for the time of her purification that was ending because of Yeshua. Let's look at that. Um, Luke chapter 2. You know what? I've been wanting to share this for the longest time, and I don't think I've ever shared this. Um, to see the words of Luke as being uh, something that we can learn from. Okay. Luke chapter 2. Uh, verse 21 to 24. And when eight days are completed before his circumcision, now this is the circumcision of Yeshua. Okay. His name was called Yeshua, and the name given the, by an angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now, it says, and when the days of the purification according to the law of Moses were completed. So how many days was it for a male? Yeshua was a male? 40 days. So at the end of 40 days, 
according to all those which completed, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the Torah of the Lord, every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be called holy to Jehovah. He was a firstborn of Miriam. And to offer sacrifice according to what was said in the Torah of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now why does it say that? Do you know, actually, you're supposed to offer a sheep and a dove. However, if you're poor, you don't offer a sheep. You offer just the doves. Okay, so basically it, show, it shows you how poor they were. They were very poor, but God was with them. Okay, and they offered up, according to this, a pair of turtle doves. Okay, and that's what the Torah of Moses says. So, exactly, I'm sorry, in, uh, in Vikra or Leviticus 12, 6, this is what it says. Um, let me find it real quick. Okay. Upon the completion of the days of purity for a son or for a daughter, you shall bring a sheep within its first year as a burnt offering and a young dove or a turtle dove for a sin offering to the entrance of the tent of meeting to the Kohen. He shall offer it before Jehovah and provide atonement for her, and she shall become purified from the source of her blood, that is the Torah of one who gives birth to a male or to a female. But if her hand cannot find sufficient funds for a sheep, then she shall take two turtle doves or two young doves, one for a burnt offering and one for a sin offering to provide atonement for her shall the Cohen, and she shall become purified. In other words, that shows you her condition. She was poor. So she brought two turtle doves. Okay. Um, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Shimeon. Now this is important. For 40 days now after Yeshua was born, we know he was born around Sukkot. So what date does that give us? I never really thought about looking up the dates. What's the, the date was the 15th of Tishri and uh, the 15th. That's Sukkot. Huh? That's Sukkot. Yes, I know. But what was the 15th of the next month? The next month after Tishri was Cheshvan, right? Cheshvan, 15th. 15th of Cheshvan. More days than you have the flood of Noah. Yeah, okay. And then uh, 10 more days. So it would be about Cheshvan, Cheshvan 25 Cheshvan. would have been the time that Yeshua would be would be the end of the days of her purification, right? Mm -hmm. So think about that. She was getting purified on the days that we remember the story of Noah and the flood. <laughs> okay. So there's a picture. The, the earth was purified by water, right? And, and here is Yeshua getting purified. Not Yeshua. Uh, Miriam getting purified. You know. So anyhow, let's go on. So there was a man whose name was Shimeon, and the man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death till he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And it came in the Spirit to the temple, and his parents brought in the child, Yeshua, to carry him out, to carry to him the custom of the Torah. And he took him and into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Yehovah, you have let your bondservant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen my, have seen your Yeshua salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all the peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And his mother and father were amazed at the things which were being said about him. And Shimeon, Shimeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Miriam his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rise of many in Israel and for a sign to be opposed. So he's prophesying now. And a sword will pierce even your own soul to the end that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess. Now pay attention to this. I'm going to pull this together for you. A prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Manuel. So we know when this happened. The 25th of Cheshvan, the next month. Okay. She was advanced in years, having lived with a husband seven years in her marriage. Then as a widow in the age of 84, she never left the temple, serving night and day with fastings and prayers. Amen. And at that very moment, she came up and began giving thanks to God and continued to speak of him to all those who were looking for the redemption of, of Jerusalem. Okay, now, um, look at their names. I have the studies on the bottom of page three. Okay. 
Shimeon means hearkening, hearing, listening. Okay, to, and we have a word in, in Hebrew, the word, his name Shimeon means heard. Okay, to hear. Okay. Now look at the top of page four. Ana means grace. Okay, it comes from Chana, grace, to be gracious, to show favor, to, to be pitied, to make gracious. Okay, so the two were like the, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, which is what the two turtle doves are symbolic of. So they have turtle doves that they offered up, symbolic of the Holy Spirit, and they also like two witnesses. Who were these two? Anna and Shimeon were two witnesses. Okay. So we need to listen by reason of the word, the Torah, and we need his grace and mercy, that is spirit. We worship our God in spirit and in truth. These two people represent the promise of the baby Yeshua, that he will make a way so that we will worship in spirit and in truth. We will see the grace of God and hear and do his Torah by the spirit. I love this. It could also be that God hears our cries for salvation and gave us his grace through Yeshua who brings us salvation. You see that everything that happens in our lives, even the people where we meet, their names confirm everything else. So here, if you just look at honor right off the bat, grace, mercy, right? And Shimeon means heard. In other words, God heard and has provided Grace and mercy. Here it is, Yeshua. Amen. Right in front of her. God set this whole thing up. Okay. Now, it's getting late, but I, I, I want to continue to share. This whole portion is about leprosy. This, the rest of this portion is about leprosy. What is leprosy? There's a bunch of different kinds of leprosy, and I'm going to let you do the study on your own about the leprosy. But I want to tell you what God is doing with us spiritually is dealing with our spiritual leprosy. Getting the leaven out is like getting the leprosy out. Okay. But here's the thing: leprosy is is a problem in us, in our soul. The Jews even say this. Leprosy really isn't about the physical leprosy. It's about the condition of our soul. Okay, God wants us clean. He's saying, I come for a pure and spotless bride. Well, if you say spots in ancient times, you're talking about leprosy. Okay. Spots and blemishes are leprosy. You know what the biggest problem, the, the thing that causes leprosy, it has to do with the tongue. It's when we speak against each other and we hurt each other and we put each other down and we don't build each other up, we don't encourage each other. The power of the tongue, okay? The leprosy is all the slander and the backbiting and all this. This is the biggest problem with the church. When you think of yourself, because you might be immature and you might not know, someone else speaks in tongues or someone else, is getting a word and it bothers you, it means there's a leprosy in you. Because God is doing something. Okay? And you can't judge from the outside. You have to judge by the heart. We we should never judge each other by the by the outside, outward appearance. It's supposed to be by the heart. Do you know the story of Moses? And he, he complained that uh, I'm sorry, the steer the story of Miriam, another Miriam, <laughs> uh, the, the sister of Moses, she complained that Moses had a Cushite wife. Okay, in other words, she wasn't, she wasn't a part of the tribes of Israel, and you know, she wasn't Jewish, she wasn't like, you know, she was probably black, okay? And, and it's like, it's kind of like, you know, because she spoke against Moses, she ended up getting leprous. But this is one particular leprosy. But she was put out of the camp for a week. And she had to yell, Tame, Tame! I'm unclean. 
don't come near me. That's what life first had to do. In ancient times, they had to be separated from everybody else and yell, Tane, Tane, don't come near me, I'm unclean. But they have to say, if you're leprous, you should be saying, Tame, Tame, I'm unclean. I'm full of faults. I'm full of failures. Have pity, have mercy, have grace upon me. Every day we should be saying this. This is a bride that has her spots and blemishes removed. Because she's admitting her own faults. Instead of pointing the finger at somebody else. Always say this. You point the finger at somebody, you got three pointing back. The Father, the Son, and the Lord are The Holy Spirit. So this is the biggest problem of the church is leprosy. It's the, it, leprosy comes as a result of the spiritual malady of the tongue. Slander, gossip. This is a big problem. This is the whole problem of our government right now. The tongue. Think about this. This is the biggest problem. It's not homosexuality. It's not uh, uh, you know, adultery and all that. Yes, those are sins. And yes, they, there are certain types of leprosy you could say that can come from that. But what I'm saying is the real leprosy is not looking at you, but looking at everybody else. And judging people from the outside and not knowing their hearts. This is what God wants to clean up. And we'll talk about the cleaning up of the leper next week. Okay. But basically what I'm saying here and what we need to see here is we need to be saying to us, Tame, Tame, unclean, unclean. What am I, Abba? I'm a mess. I need your grace. I need your mercy every day. That's a person that's clean in God's eyes. There's no other person. The leprous person is a person that holds on to their judgment of one another without knowing the heart of those people. People make mistakes, people sin, but we have to have grace and mercy and lead them in the way that is right and help them. Not judge them. This is why God's grief. So many souls are not getting saved because of a church that thinks they're so perfect and so right and they're full of self-righteousness. And it is leprosy. It is spots and blemishes. So let's get the spots and blemishes out of us. And then we can be like whatever things been going on today. Become what we were supposed to be. The people of God, full of love, full of unconditional love. And you know what? It will deliver them from homosexuality. It will deliver them from the LGBTQ, RSP, whatever else they add to it. Okay, It will deliver them from adultery. It will deliver them from abortion. Okay, it, it, It's that love by getting the leprosy out of us, by, getting, by confessing, knowing we are sinners, and knowing we're not better than somebody else, and loving people through their issues. Can you imagine what the world would be like if every Christian truly loved? Man, that would shake them all up. <coughs> but also, we make our stand. We do make our voice known, but we don't make it known in such a way as it, it appears to people we are judging them. We need to talk about the love of God and how the love of God will heal you of, of all these things. And the power of God and how real He is and how He's going to be the one that does it. <coughs> so there's I'll let you do the research of the different kinds of leprosy. There's five kinds. And and then, you know, we'll talk next week about how to heal the leper. Okay. He's coming for a pure and spotless bride. That's in on page eleven. Okay. And uh, you can see it's in asterisks. Does your copy have asterisks on it it says remember also he's coming for a pure and spotless bride your copy on the page 11 asterisk take a look at that there's a lot of scriptures there about about that Yeshua what did the leper what happened when the leper came to Yeshua he said and I always forget this part he said if it do your will will you forgive me yes Says, you're forgiven. It's that simple. Look at you as being leprous 
and ask God's mercy. And this is how we're supposed to live. None of us are better than anybody else. We're Amen. all the same. We're all the dust. We're all the grass that withers. We're all the flower that fades. But we have the Spirit of God in us. Amen. Okay, and He's cleansing us. The season of Enoch Hamets is getting the leaven out, but it's also getting the leprosy out. I mean, exposing the leprosy, exposing the, the things that are causing us to be leprous in our heart and in our soul so that we can be clean. Hallelujah. And start off the new year right. Hallelujah. Abba, in the name of Yeshua, Lord, I ask that you just take this into people's hearts. Transform them, Abba. Transform us all, Lord, into your image and likeness, Lord. We don't even know who, who you are. We don't even know who we are. Abba, and this is this is why we want to become what you intended us to be, Abba. Because it's not only do we get to know you, but we get to know ourselves and become what you intended us to be in your likeness, in the image, in your image and likeness. Hallelujah. And yet set them in the moon, Abba. For we love you, Lord, and we want to love like you love. And we want to be a witness and we want to work this harvest with you. We want to to, to shine for you, Lord, in in the darkness. Amen. 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 Yehovah bless you and keep you. Yehovah lift up his countenance and find to be gracious to you. Yehovah lift up his face and find to give you peace. In the name of our Sar Shalom, our Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of is bringing forth his glory, hallelujah, to the earth, who will turn everything around, Abba, you will get the glory, and your name will be great in this earth again. In the name of Yeshua. You know, Lord, it, it says in the scriptures, I mean, the, I mean not the scriptures, uh, Donald Trump is going around talking about make America great again, Abba. I want to make Jehovah great again in the earth. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I Lord, make your name great. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise again. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Hey, Josh, do you still want to share? Yeah. But I mean, I, I can share after. That's fine. Baruch Atah Yehovah Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachananu Torah HaTemet Echa HaOlam Nata Betochenu Baruch Atah Yehovah Noten HaTorah Amen Blessed is you, O Lord our God, King of the King Universe, who has given us the Torah of Truth and has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, Yehovah, giver of the Torah. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.